Hello, I'm Doc Sainz. Bill Gates said, and I quote, if the auto industry had applied lessons learned in computer technology to building cars, cars would get 1,000 miles per gallon and cost $25, end quote. GM responded to Bill Gates by saying that they had considered this but didn't want their cars to crash for no reason at least twice a day and occasionally also for no reason while on the freeway need to be pulled over to the side of the road and shut down then restarted before you could continue or you needed to purchase a new car every time there was a new white line painted on the road. Let's look at some biotechnology headlines. Millions starving in Darfur. China doctors its food to fudge protein level. Kroger stops selling milk from cows given RBST. Chipotles using eggs from free-range hens. Burger King phases out pork from sows in stalls. Here are some key points to consider. First, people are starving around the world because of a refusal to use existing technology for supplying protein and other essential nutrients. Secondly, biotechnology is not Darth Vader. Biotechnology by 2050 will provide the food to feed the projected 7 billion people on the planet. Thirdly, biotechnology is a major player in our green earth policy. We now produce three times the food we did in 1900, utilizing far less acres, thereby making great progress in conservation and the environment. Fourthly, purchase food that does originate from biotechnology. It fits our philosophy for the environment and safeguards higher quality food at lowest prices. Former President Clinton said, and I quote, we must endorse biotechnology because society's first obligation is to provide food for the world's citizens. Secondly, it can address climate change and soil erosion, keys to environmental health. And thirdly, he said, is to manage energy conservation. And lastly, is to improve the world for future generations. End quote. Biotechnology has increased crop yields, made a positive contribution to the environment, limited chemical pesticides, and reduced energy consumption by reduction of fuel usage with minimum tillage practices. Farmers, while growing three times the crops on fewer acres, have minimized tillage, which preserves carbon in the soil rather than increasing CO2 in the air. Biotechnology crops grown by 8.5 million farmers worldwide on 215 million acres have reduced carbon emissions by 8.9 metric tons. That's the equivalent of taking 4 million cars off the road. Since 1996, biotechnology crops have saved 441 million gallons of fuel. Farm income has increased by 2.7 billion, 55% of that increase is in underdeveloped countries. Biotechnology crops are approved in 22 countries with 40 countries expected to approve biotechnology by 2010. Food crops shipped to Zambia were locked in warehouses, unavailable to starving citizens because the food originated from genetically modified seed. Starving people eventually overpowered guards to get the food from the warehouses. Eight years ago, Ingo Patricus, a geneticist, developed golden rice with a gene to enhance vitamin A and protein. Greenpeace and other activists opposed this and other genetically modified seed. It hasn't been grown since. Ingo Patricus said, Food scare activists would rather see millions starve than be saved by high-tech seeds. Witch weed, a highly pathogenic corn plant parasite, prevents corn from being grown in vast areas of Africa. Now, genetically modified corn yields four times more corn and is resistant to the herbicide that kills witch weed. 
Farmers continue to starve because they are forbidden to plant genetically modified corn. In Ireland, in the 1840s, a million people starved to death and another million escaped because of a potato blight. Now, three different universities have bred potatoes resistant to an even tougher and newer form of the blight. The Irish government refuses to allow these potatoes to be planted. Food scare activists, Greenpeace and World Wildlife Fund fail to see that without high yields from the Green Revolution and biotechnology, hungry people will quickly clear the world's remaining forests for low yield crops. Norm Borlaug, 1970 Nobel Peace Prize winner said, and I quote, the first component of social justice is adequate food, end quote. Borlaug developed high-protein wheat and rice varieties that saved millions from starving in Mexico, South America, and India during the 1970s and 1980s. Biotechnology not only increases quantity of food, but produces food that is better for you. Well, that's it for today, folks. We'll see you down the road. Down the Road is brought to you in part by Prince Agra, makers of Omnigen AF, advancing animal nutrition for healthy animals. And Woodruff Enterprise of Springfield, Ohio, 